Hey guys, doing a real quick toe-in alignment here on this 2006 BMW C325 or CI convertible. Now in this case, let's uh, actually look up some specifications on uh, online on all data and see how close we can get with our string method. Now this is, uh, <laughs> you guys might yell at me, oh BMW, you can't use strings on a BMW. Well, you know what, uh, <laughs> the, the, okay, here's the situation. The tread wear is actually pretty decent. You can see it's a little worn down on the sides here, but that's because these tires were severely underinflated, like 15 PSI when this car rolled in. But the main problem is the steering wheel was actually cocked to the left when you're driving straight. So right now, you know, I straightened it out and with the strings we can see that this wheel so the string is touching right there but over here, let me get a ruler so we can see this better so right here we have about two sixteenths towed out on this wheel over here again this side's touching now and then the front, we have about oh quarter of an inch, so four sixteenths towed in. All right, so you see why the steering wheel would have to be, you know, turned to the left to keep this thing going straight. So now let's go to the computer and look up some specifications. All right, here we are. 06 BMW standard suspension front axle. So all we're interested in is the total toe. Come over here. It is 0 degrees 14 minutes plus or minus 8 minutes. Total toe in. Okay, it's positive so obviously it's uh, you know the wheels are pointing in. So let's uh, do a little trig here. So that's our spec. So for one wheel we divide those numbers in half. So for one wheel we want seven minutes plus or minus four minutes towed in. Okay, so drawing a little schematic here. So imagine this is our string that's parallel to the car. And now I know that's another variable if the track widths in the rear and the front are a little different. Um, you know, there will be some error. Um, and at the end of the video I'll show you, you know, even if we're an inch off, like the rear is an inch narrower than the front, what will our margin of error be? And uh, I'll show you guys that we can still get within specifications. So anyways, let's say our string is parallel to the car and it's important here to note your wheel diameter where the string is touching or where we're measuring you know, from the tire to the string. Uh, that's 20 inches and we'll stick with inches here. <clears throat> uh, okay, so there's our string, there's our wheel, it's 20 inches. Now this degrees, you know, the specification is seven minutes. Okay, we want to get as close to that as possible. And there are 60 minutes and one degree. So our theta, we want seven minutes, okay. Seven minutes. So we need to figure out what we're going to see on our ruler when we measure the gap between the string and the tire at that one edge. You know, one side will be touching, the other side will have a gap. What's our formula? Okay, let's say this is the right triangle. We have uh, the unknown right here and known length here, 20 inches. So the tangent of that angle that we know, well, we want is seven minutes will be what opposite over adjacent, right? Remember uh, high school trig? So tangent of theta is our unknown over 20 inches. So to figure out our unknown, we just multiply tangent of 7 minutes by 20 inches. Okay? So you do that on your calculator. And if you don't know what 7 minutes is, you can say 7 divided by 60 
So that's how many degrees our specification is. So 0 0.116 degrees. We take tangent of our answer. So it's 2.03 uh, and the exponent is minus 3, so I'll move the decimal point over 3 spots. Now, that we want to multiply by 20. Okay, so you can set times 20. 0 0.04 inches. Okay, that's why I wrote here. Our unknown, 0 0.04 inches. But we're measuring in sixteenths of an inch. So if you take 1 over 16, that's 0 0.0625. So our desired gap there is less than a sixteenth of an inch. Okay? So we want, when we uh, get these wheels straightened out, our string should be here and our gap should be less than sixteenths of an inch. Okay? So let's go ahead and loosen up the tie rods and set those uh, correctly. So again, the hard part about these alignments is making sure you're uh, inner and outer tie rod ends turn. Here's what a seized one sounds like. I actually got it loose. Oh, it's moving now, but pipe wrench, adjustable wrench, a little tap. So Oh, at least we got that one loosened up. We got to do the same on the other side. Spray it with a little, little magic stuff in here. So uh, we'll set this back down and have to retake our measurements because I didn't count how many turns I turned that thing, but let's try the other side. Okay, so we got both tie rod ends loose and adjusted. So before, our measurements were plus 4 sixteenths on the left wheel and minus 3 sixteenths on the right. Now, right here it's just barely touching, and right here, Real small gap, I'd say about half half of a sixteenth of an inch. Which, uh, if you remember our spec here, we want less than a sixteenth. So, and then the margin of error is uh, four minutes. Okay, so if this is, uh, you know, seven minutes is 0 .04, then four minutes will be like 0 .02. So basically we want 1 16th or less toe in, but still positive. On the left side here, again, we're uh, grazing on the rear of the tire, and on the front, just about a 16th of an inch. So I'm going to call that perfect, make sure our steering wheel is still straight, right on the money. Take it for a test drive. We should be all set. Now the only other variable here is so let's uh, write our after. So less than one sixteenth of an inch, and this is less than one sixteenth of an inch. That's within spec. So the uh, the one factor we still have to consider is, okay, so let's say our wheels, so that's our line, so let's say our rear wheel is slightly in, you know, compared to the front wheel. So our track, the distance between there and there, difference in track is a little different. Now, uh, for this 
BMW, they don't specify the actual track in the rear or the front, but in the Volkswagen Jetta, um, I looked up the specs, and the rear track was 22 millimeters narrower than the front. That means this gap on one side would be 11 millimeters, or see if we do this in inches, one inch is 25 millimeters, so you know, let's say less than half an inch. Worst case scenario, let's say half an inch, okay? I mean, I haven't seen tracks that are more than an inch different total. So now all we have to do is the same kind of trigonometry calculation. How far off are we going to be if our string is actually stretched from here instead of being perfectly parallel to the vehicle, okay? So our string would be stretched here. You would actually touch here. And you see this angle. This would be our error. Because now the string isn't exactly parallel to the vehicle. So let's just do a ballpark calculation on what that error could be, assuming, let's say our wheelbase, what's typical wheelbase, like 100 inches? So wheelbase of 100 inches and we're half an inch in on the rear. What will the error be on the front? Alright, so here we have our right triangle. And now we know the lengths of both sides of the triangle, but we're trying to figure out what the error would be at that degree. Okay, so the basically this what we're trying to figure out, this theta error. Okay, so the way we do that, again we write down our relationship. So Tangent of theta would be opposite over adjacent, 0 0.5 inches over 100 inches. Okay, let's uh, do that. So our unknown here is theta, right? So in that case, theta would be take the inverse tangent of 0 0.5 over 100. Let's do that. Take inverse tangent of 0.5 divided by 100. So 0 0.28, so let's say 0 0.3 degrees. Approximately 0 0.3 degrees. Okay, and how many minutes is that? So 0 0.3 multiplied by 60 minutes per degree equals, so let's see, times 60 17, 17 minutes. Okay, and let's convert that to sixteenths of an inch. So, twenty times tangent of seventeen minutes. So let's see. Let's do uh, divide that by sixty. We get our degrees, like we had before, zero point three degrees. Now we plug that in here. So twenty tangent of our answer. So our error. When measuring with a ruler, it would be 0 0.1 inches, or you convert that to sixteenths, I guess. So divide by 0 0.625. So error would be approximately 1.5. 16th of an inch. So again on the ruler it would be maybe one one tick. Okay? And that is I would say not that much. So if you want to be really accurate with the string method, you can still do it. If you know your track, you can you know 
instead of setting your wheel right along the string, you can say, well, my if I want zero toe in, I just want 1.5 or 1.5 sixteenths of an inch gap in the front, and then your actual wheel will be, you know, straightforward. So, yep, there is a, you know, there is some error there, and you could say it's significant. You know, it's within within the uh, allowable specifications. But absolutely, if you want to do a perfect job, then you have to take that into account. But again, it's a you know two-second calculation as long as you know your specifications. And uh, so the string method obviously can be improved on uh, from the basic stretch your string and set the toe and let it go, right? All right, guys, I hope that clears up some questions from part one. I appreciate you watching. Stay tuned for more. Today we got this sexy 2006 BMW 325CI in the shop and it's here for a rattle in the back end. Let's see what it is. <laughs> and the guy said the dealer already replaced the right side, now the left side's rattling. Shock absorber. Well, it took the bottom bolt out here where it attaches to the knuckle and uh, I thought shock absorbers usually stay together, but this guy... <laughs> Whoops. Something broke. So, uh, that's what's left of it. <laughs> that's a blown shock if I've ever seen one. <laughs>